Christ. I see Christ in you. You my brother. Okay, hold on. Yeah, I see Christ in you. I see my my brothers to be better than me. Truth be told. Truth be told. This is what we must do to avoid envy. Truth be told. Truth be told. And blacks and Hispanics are family. Truth be told. Truth be told. I just pray you see Christ when you see me. Truth be told. Truth be told. Shalom. Most high in Christ bless. You are now tuning into Truth Be Told DC. Broadcasting live via listenvisionlive.com. Be sure to tune in every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to hear the truth according to the Bible. Hosted by IUIC DC. For music, clothing, and instruments of learning, Visit OriginalRoyalty.com and IsraelUnite.org. Shalom. Good afternoon. Welcome back to Truth Be Told. And the truth is, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are the true Israelites of the Bible. Today's lesson is the Catholic deception. And to my right, I have, I'm Officer Micah. And to my right, Soldier Emmanuel. And to my left, Officer Phineas. Officer Mendel. And as we always do, we're going to start off with the book of John, chapter 8, verse 32. The book of St. John, chapter 8, verse 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And as we always go over, the truth are the law, statutes, and commandments of the Bible. Now let's start off with Deuteronomy 28, verse 64. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. The Israelites scatter us across all nations. From the one end of the earth, even unto the other. So from the east unto the west, north and south. And there thou shalt serve other gods. Now who are these other gods? We're about to see. Which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. So Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, our ancestors didn't serve these gods. Even wood and stone. Hmm. Wood and stone. Now, wood is referring to Christianity. What's the image of Christianity that, that represents it? The wooden cross. And exactly. that stone, yeah. and that stone, as we know, is that Kaaba stone that we go, some of our people and Muslims go down and pray to it, mm -hmm. bow to it, kiss it. Mm -hmm. People pray the cross the same way, too. They hang it around their neck. Don't, they don't, for, don't forget about the statue of Mary. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. We're going to cover that, too. Yep. Now, let's get the uh, Book of Two Babylons, page 197. The book, The Two Babylons, by Reverend Alexander Hislop. He got to lower his mic. Page 197. There is yet one more symbol of the Ramish worship to be noticed, and that is the sign of the cross. Uh huh. In the papal system, as is well known, the sign of the cross and the image of the cross are all in all. No prayer can be said, no worship engaged in, no step almost can be taken without the frequent use of the sign of the cross. The cross is looked upon as the grand charm. As a charm. And that has to do with witchcraft. Yeah, just make sure he reads the highlighted areas. Just that, just that only. As the great refuge in every season of danger, in every hour of temptation, as the infallible pres preservative from all the powers of darkness. Yeah. The same sign of the cross. So the same cross that Christians wear today, having their churches and their homes and their uh, car windows. That Rome now worships. That Rome worships. Was used in the Babylonian mysteries. As what? <laughs> was applied by paganism. By what? Paganism. By paganism. So that same cross that we worship and bow down to today is a pagan symbol. And what does it represent? To the same magic purposes. Magic. It was honored with the same honors, that which is now called the Christian cross. That, that who now calls what? The Christian cross. Okay. Was originally known Christian emblem at all, but was the Read that part one more time. 
was originally no Christian emblem at all. So the cross, its origin, was never a Christian emblem or symbol. The cross, crucifixion was a, ter- was a, uh, was a way of committing death back in the day, just like they, they hung people in gallows. Now we have um, injections, we have the electric chair. That was a way of killing criminals. But it was the mystic Tao of the Chaldeans and Egyptians. So the Babylonians and the Egyptians. The true original form of the letter T, the initial of the name Tammuz. Of who? Tammuz. Okay, keep going to the next page. So that means it has roots in paganism. It says all Christianity is rooted in paganism. Even the symbol of the cross, we find out uh, the history on it is rooted in paganism. Right. And that mystic Tao was marked in baptism on the foreheads of those initiated in the mysteries and was used in every variety of way as a most sacred symbol to identify Tammuz with the sun. Tammuz, a pagan sun god, your sun day worship. So that means... They used to put the cross on their forehead when they did their pagan rituals. (laughs) To identify Tammuz with the sun, it was joined sometimes to the circle of the sun, as in number four. So there it goes right there. That so-called Christian cross is no Christian symbol at all. It is a pagan symbol used for sun worship. That's true. You try to tell a Christian that most of what they practice is pagan and is false. They don't want to do any research. They don't want to nope. accept the truth. You can go through the history books. You can, I mean, now you can get on Google and see, find out a lot of uh, information like Christmas and different things like that. It's all paganism. It has nothing to do with the Bible yep. at all. Yep. And the name of the book was The Two Babylons. Read the Arthur again one more time for the audience. The Two Babylons by Reverend Alexander Hislop. You can find that on Amazon. So yeah, make now, sure you get the original one too, that red copy right there because they, uh, Revise that book and they took a lot of good information out of it. Don't buy the revised version. Right. Get that red one just like that. That's the one you want. Let's go to uh, Habakkuk. The book of Habakkuk, chapter 2 and verse 18. Uh huh. What profiteth the graven image? What profiteth the graven image? What good can it do to you? What, mm-hmm. good, what good can it be? Let's see. That the maker thereof hath graven it. Uh huh. The molten image. And a teacher of lies. A what? A teacher of lies. A teacher of lies. That's what Christianity is based off. It's based off of lies. Exactly. The cross is a lie. Exactly. Not only is the cross a lie, but when they came with that cross, what did they also come with? That fake white image right. of Christ, which was Borgia. also a lie. Yep. All nations can be saved. That the maker of his work trusted therein uh-huh. to make dumb idols. To make dumb idols like Caesar Borgia. With the cross came Caesar came the whitewashed image of Christ that we was forced to worship or die. Let's get uh, Leviticus 20, 26 and 1. The book of Leviticus chapter 26 and verse 1. Ye shall make you no idols nor graven image. Wait, is that a commandment? That's a commandment, right? Right. Start from the top. Ye shall make you no idols, nor graven image. Mm-hmm. So what's a graven image? The cross, having those, uh, what north can it be having in their houses? Porcelain dolls Indoors. of angels. Because yeah. they actually, people actually reverence that thing like they're talking to Jesus or the Most High God. That's yeah. how they treat it. Don't forget, Mary. Mary, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, we're going to get Mary. Mary, Mary. <laughs> Mary going to be in the mix. <laughs> Neither. Stop on top again. Ye shall make you no idols uh-huh. nor graven image. Okay. Neither rear you up a standing image. So no statues. Neither shall ye set up any image of stone. Of what? Of stone. Go to mm-hmm. stone again. Yeah. In your land uh-huh. to and do- bow down unto it. And what what do they do in a, a Mecca? They bow down to that joint when they make their hearts. Hey, nope. not only that, bro. I'm trying to tell you, if if some 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 of y'all, uh, mostly Northern Kingdom. Mm-hmm. You got your little statues of Mary on the dashboard. On the, on the day, they got yeah. candles around it, yeah, and they right. bow down and pray to it. Right. Literally. For what? For I am the Lord your God. So the most I commanded that. We're not supposed to do these things. Mm-hmm. Let's head over to the book of Acts. The book of Acts, chapter 17, verse 29. 
For as much then as we are the offspring of God, uh-huh. we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver. So we can't compare the Most High to these worldly idols that we make, to mm-hmm. a statue, to an image, to the Madonna painting, to a porcelain doll. Uh, some Northern Kingdom say they be seen... Uh, Mary and tortillas and trees <laughs> in the sky. Like in the sky. Oh, no. Hey, remember the tree that's in New York? Yeah. They got the little, uh, they see Mary in the tree. That, that's what the idol worship gets you. It makes you crazy. Or silver or stone. Uh-huh. Graven. Or stone. So that cobblestone, that's, that's, that's another shot at uh, Islam again. Mm-hmm. Christianity and Islam, just like Deuteronomy 20 and 64 said, we're going to praise those gods of wood and stone. Mm-hmm. That's all throughout the scriptures. Mm-hmm. Those false gods of wood and stone. Graven by art uh-huh. and man's device. And man's device. And by art, just like uh, Caesar Borgia, that was uh, painted by art. Graven by art. Let's get uh, Exodus 20 and verse 5. The book of Exodus, chapter 20 and verse 5. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. Thou shalt not what? Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. So if Muslims supposedly follow the Old Testament, and the Old Testament says not to bow down to any graven image of rock or bow down to it, why are they not following these laws? Because the book is not for them, that's why. This book is only for the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. We are the Israelites, and we're going to follow the laws as the Bible says. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, Uh visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. So the Most High hates them when we praise these false gods and false idols. That's why a lot of people in Christianity and different religions, why are they getting chastised? Going through sickness, disease, uh, low estates. This is all punishment because we didn't keep the commandments and we're continuing to praise these false gods. And it's going to keep on happening until we all repent. That one third repent, and Christ is going to come back. But until then, these curses are going to plague us until then. We're going to go to the book, uh, The Pagan Origins of Christian Holidays. The Pagan Origins. The Pagan Origins of Christian Holidays Mm -hmm. by Elisha J. Israel. Page four. The sun was personified and worshipped throughout the world under many names. And Sunday, or the day of the sun... And has, what? Or the day of the sun... No, start from what? And Sunday? And Sunday, uh-huh. or the day of the sun... When 90% of Christians go to church. Has been and continues to be the foremost pagan day of worship. The foremost pagan day of worship. So that's like the <laughs> grand master of all pagan holidays is so, Sunday worship. So hold on now. So we got the cross, which is pagan. We've proven that earlier. And now they're telling you that Sunday worship is <laughs> pagan. So I, I'm just trying to figure out how you can call yourself a Christian because doesn't Christian mean to be a follower of Christ? So yeah. Supposed but they're following, they following paganism. So what does that make them? Pagans. Pagans. Exactly. Not idolatry. <laughs> in the midst of idolatry. <laughs> Originally, sun worship was based on the sun and the six known planets. Uh By Mm -hmm. the time of the Roman imperial period, the days of the week were named in honor of these pagan gods. Right. The days of the week, the months, they're all named after pagan gods. Because remember, uh, the Catholic Church came from the Roman. They all started from the Roman Catholic Church. That was his foundation. And all of the different Christian denominations broke off from that. Right. right. That was the mother. So all these religions are just branches off of that. Page five. The first civil. Oh, and today they still answer. They still have that, uh, that church conference, right? Yeah. The they world, still, yeah. The world oh, church. Yeah. They all got to teach the same doctrine. Just like at school, teachers got to go meet up and teach the same thing. Curriculum. Yeah. The church teaches the same thing throughout the world. All, uh, all, Christian, all Christian religions. Page five. The first civil or ecclesiastical law sanctioning Sunday worship uh-huh. was put forth by Constantine on March 21st, 321 A.D. And that was a brother, but he was in wickedness. So, Keep I going. mean, that's, that's proving another lie false of Christianity that after Christ died, they changed the worship day to Sunday because this is saying that a man... 321 years after Christ died Had to pass a law to change the Sabbath to Sunday <laughs> So that's showing you right there That what were they doing up until that point They was keeping, keeping the Sabbath, the Sabbath. Right. 
on Saturday like the law tells us to do. Right. right. This edict reads, on the venerable day of the sun, let the magistrates and people residing in cities rest and let all workshops be closed. Uh -huh. Like on Sundays, the mall closed at 6, stores closed at 5 o'clock. Everything closes early yeah. on Sunday. When in reality, they should be closing early on Friday to get prepared for the real Sabbath. Chick-fil-A right. don't even open up on Sunday. Right. right. <laughs> in the country, however, persons engaged in agriculture may freely and lawfully continue their pursuits. Mm -hmm. Because it often happens that another day is not suitable for grain sowing or for vine planting. Lest by neglecting the proper moment for such operations... The bounty of heaven should be lost. So they let farmers and planters to let them continue their jobs on Sundays. It, it sounds like he made up his own law. And that's yeah. what he did. Right. Go to page six. That's just a little bit on page six. Page six. Uh huh. Christians shall not Judaize or be idle on Saturday. Shall not what? Shall not Judaize. <laughs> Judea. Judaize. So keeping keep the, the law. Sabbath. So, yeah. In other words, keep the Sabbath. <laughs> and be idle on the Saturday, and it says Sabbath right here. So basically, they're telling you you can't keep the real Say, Sabbath. Don't rest. Yeah, don't rest. Say, don't be idle. <laughs> don't rest. So one, they're forcing us to keep the Sabbath on a different day, mm -hmm. and forcing us to break the Sabbath on the real Sabbath day. Wow. Which happens today? You try to ask you. Most people can't get off Saturdays. Jobs, they it's almost a demand to work Saturdays. They don't care about Sunday. They don't care about Friday. But Saturdays, they want you in there. Mostly you Israelites. And it says here, but shall work on that day. Uh -huh. But the Lord's day. So now they're saying Sunday is the Lord's day. They shall especially honor and as being Christians. So they're separating <laughs> Christians from the Judites. Uh -huh. Shall, if possible, do no work on that day. If, however, they are found Judaizing. So if I don't keep in the law. They shall be shut out from Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Another lie. Now, yeah. Sunday, what about you doing this Sunday? This is crazy, they man. Kick back, grill. That. Uh -oh. Hey, that, that right there. This that's all up. made up. <laughs> oh, <laughs> hey, that's why the uh, scriptures say that the. Um... We got to move it, fellas. Yeah, okay. go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Let's get, uh, let's get the video. No, let's get, uh, let's get Leviticus 23 and 3. To show you when the real Sabbath is. The okay, book of Leviticus, that. chapter 23 and verse 3. Uh-huh. Six days shall work be done. Six days. And the first day of the week, you can look on your calendar, your phone, the computer. The first day is Sunday. Right. So let's count. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So Saturday is the seventh day. Sunday is not the, the last day of the week. Sunday is the first day of the week. Right. But they changed it saying Monday is the first business day. That's how they confuse people. Keep going. But the seventh day is, so, is the Sabbath of rest. Is the Sabbath of rest. And holy convocation. And holy gathering. That's a law. We have to gather on the Sabbath day. Ye shall do no work therein. Not supposed to work on the Sabbath day. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. So it doesn't matter where you're at. You can be in India. You can be in Europe. You can be in Australia. You can be in South America. It don't matter where you're at. You have to keep the Sabbath day. Uh, let's get the video, Mike. Yeah. Uh, Christianity is a pagan religion. When I was in Washington talking to Pastor Mark Blitz, he asked me if I'd ever considered the study of the lunar eclipse with regard to a prophetic signal. I said, no. He said, you should. So I came home and thinking about what the pastor had said, I sat down at my computer and began to work. I knew that our Bible this one was written on the lunar calendar. Our calendar, the Western civilization calendar, is the Gregorian calendar from Pope Gregory of Rome. That means it's pagan in or origin. It's not God's calendar. Our calendar and the calendar of this book do not match. Sun God is for Sunday. Moon God is for Monday. That's a sermon for another time. Believe me, much of what Christianity salutes is pagan to its roots. <laughs> there you go. The, the devil himself telling you what, right, what it right. is. Hey, everybody in the audience's head exploded. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so if you don't believe these scripts, maybe you believe your oppressor. I don't know, but the Bible is enough for me. <laughs> so uh, let's get uh, the book of Matthew. 
the book of St. Matthew, chapter 15, and verse 3. Uh -huh. But he answered and said unto them, To the Pharisees, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? By your traditions, like with Constantine. Mm -hmm. His tradition was to mm -hmm. change Saturday worship to Sunday worship. Go down to verse 8. No, no. Yeah, eight. Yeah, hit eight. This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips. It's like but, most Christians doing today in the church. Mm -hmm. But their heart is far from me. So how do they draw nigh with their lips? Oh, I love Christ. Me and Christ have our own relationship. Right. Uh, I, I'm covered with the blood of Jesus, but not keeping right. no laws. I'm under grace. Right, under grace. Not even yeah. trying to keep the laws. They actually, people actually don't hate keeping the laws. They'll say you don't have to keep the laws to get the kingdom. I'm under grace, like officer said. Yeah, and you know what? Since you said that, how else are you going to get the kingdom? Because the Bible clearly says otherwise. Right. It says you got to keep the commandments. It starts off, they're saying, well, I believe. And that's what they say. Yep. So saying their own words. <laughs> that's your interpretation. Right. <laughs> Verse 9. Uh-huh. But in vain. So in vain do they worship me. So, there's, so them saying they love God, they love Christ, but they're not keeping no commandments. It's for nothing. They're profiting nothing. Just like wearing that cross. It's profiting you nothing, saying all that, all that foolishness, and you're not trying to keep the law. Teaching for doctrines. So teaching for doctrines. The commandments of men. The commandments of men. Like what? Christmas. Like Christmas. Easter. Easter. Like going to church on Sunday. It's Thanksgiving. a commandment of men. Yeah. Church on Sunday. Yeah. Hey, the funny thing is some churches even do Halloween. Right. Uh, hallelujah night. Yeah. That's what they call it. <laughs> and New Year's. <laughs> And that goes back to uh, uh, Jonas. Jack, yeah, Jonas. Pagan God. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we gotta move. All right. Uh, pagan Origins, fifteen and fifty-one. The book, the Pagan Origins of Christian Holidays by Alicia J. Israel. Uh huh. 50? Yeah, fifty. Trinity Sunday is a Christian holiday that is observed in the Western lit liturgical churches. What is not in the Bible? Keep going. Catholic, Anglican, Lutheran. Presbyterian, Methodist, and Baptist. So all denominations from the Mother Roman Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. In Roman Catholicism, the official name for Trinity Sunday is the Solemnity of the Most Holy Trinity. Trinity Sunday is a movable feast that is observed one week after Pentecost Sunday. It is held in recognition of the fundamental belief in the Holy Trinity. Which this is also false doctrine. Here we go. What is it? This is the belief that God is three persons, so, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So the Most High God is three different people. That's what Christians believe. When the reality is the Most High God, His Son, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Ghost, according to Acts, with the seven, uh, 757? 751. 751, that's the law, statutes, and the commandments. Right. That's the real Holy Ghost, not catching a seizure, passing out, doing backflips. That's not the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Running around the church, that's... That's, uh, that goes back to, uh, <laughs> to demon worship. Yeah, yeah. That goes back, yeah, it goes right back to demon worship. Uh, we learn in slavery. Possession. Yeah, de demonic yes, possession. possession. That's what it goes back to. <laughs> right. Was that Father, it? Son, no, keep going. And Holy Spirit, each uh -huh. being equal and indivisible. Each being equal, well, that's, that's not true. The Most High God, there's no one above Him. Keep going. The establishment of this day is rooted in the Arian controversy of the fourth century. Arius. A.D. 256 to 336. The presbyter of Alexandria, Egypt, believed that the father preceded Jesus Christ. Arian and his followers, Arians, mm -hmm. believe that the son has a beginning, but God has no beginning. And that the father, son, and Holy Ghost were separate entities. In 325 A.D., Emperor Constantine organized the Council of Nicaea. There we go which consisted of 318 Catholic bishops who met in Nicaea in Bithynia, Anatolia, modern Turkey. One of the major issues to be resolved was the Christological dispute concerning the Arian question regarding the relationship between the Father and the Son. This is where it got changed. The Council of Nicaea condemned the teachings of Arius. Condemned the teaching, and he was teaching correctly. The Father and Son are two separate entities and proclaimed that Jesus was the same substance as the Father. When there's many scriptures that show that that is false, but the Christians don't read that in the church. By, 
By this time, Constantine had already made Christianity the official state religion, so any deviation from the teachings of the Roman Catholic Church was considered to be rebellion against the state. So, you read out the Bible and teach according to the Bible, you're wrong and you're against the state because it goes against their doctrines. Thus, Arius was excommunicated from the Roman Church and exiled to Lyria, modern Albania. Okay, so now we're going to jump to uh, 1 Corinthians 11 and 3 to show that that's false. There's no such thing as God, Christ, and the Holy Ghost all being one. That's nowhere in the Bible. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. Okay, so our head is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. So we're over the women. So God has given an order here. Go ahead. And the head of Christ is God. So the head of Christ is God. So that right there is showing you separation. But we're going to get uh, some more. Let's go to Matthew and seven, the New Testament. 17. The book of Matthew, chapter 17, verse 4. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make thee here three tabernacles, one for thee and one for Moses and one for Elias. Okay, keep going. Verse 5. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. So now, so God shows up and said, This is my beloved son, <laughs> whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. So why would God, if they, him and Christ is the same, talk to himself? Right. That wouldn't make any sense at all. So that's showing you right there is a separation. There's an order, just like we just read in 1 Corinthians 11. Mm -hmm. So let's get uh, one more example of this. We're going to go to Matthews 19. That was true. He would have said, Here, here's my beloved me. Right. Yeah. Right. That don't make sense, man. This stuff right here, man. Look at that. The book of St. Matthews, chapter 19 and verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do? that I may have eternal life. So one came unto Christ, asking what does he got to do to get the kingdom of heaven? Let's see what Christ said. Verse 17. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one. That is God. So Christ was like, Why are you calling me good? There's nobody good but one, and that's God. So if right. he was God, why would he say something like that? Keep right. going. Right. But if thou wilt enter into life, Keep the commandments. So even mm. Christ is telling you right here, if you want to get eternal life, you got to keep the commandments, which mm -hmm. includes the Sabbath day, which we already went over that, right, which is right. a man-made custom for you to be going to church on Sundays. Right. right. All right. So let's get the uh, book out again. Get that. The book, The Pagan Origins of Christian Holidays, Elisha v. J. Israel. Chapter, page 102. In Christianity... Mary is held in high regard. Okay, so now we're talking about Mary. In various Christian denominations, and particularly within Catholicism, Mary is actually worshipped on the same plane as God. Mm. Those Christian denominations that worship Mary have bestowed blasphemous titles upon her, mm. such as the Queen of Heaven, mm -hmm. Mediatrix, <laughs> and the Mother of God. Mm. In addition to this position... What was that one? Tricks. <laughs> media tricks. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. In addition to this position and titles equal with God, there are many celebrations in honor of Mary called Marian feasts. It is true that Mary was a servant of God. She was blessed and highly favored. But nowhere in the scriptures do we read that a special status is to be given to Mary and certainly not a position equal to that of God. Huh. To hold feasts in honor and refer to her as the queen of heaven or the mediatrix between God and man and to attribute to her the spiritual title mother of God is simply not biblical. Exactly. Yep. There's no way in the scriptures where you read anything about that. Keep going. At the Equimenical Council of Ephesus in 431 AD, Mary was officially given the title mother of God. This allowed the pagans to continue the worship of their mother goddesses. Hmm. After the decline of paganism, Mary was worshipped as the most prominent manifestation of the divine feminine. Hmm. 
One of the earliest churches dedicated to, the, to Mary, the mother of God, was built on the site of a temple dedicated to Diana. Mm -hmm. There you go. We read about that. We can read about Diana in the All scriptures. Right. Go ahead. Another replicate. Another replaced the temple of Isis in Soissons. The term "mother of God," once used to refer to the Egyptian goddess Isis, mm. was transferred to Mary. This is telling you that that whole thing with Mary is rooted in paganism mm -hmm. and idolatry. Keep going. In the Lateran Council of. 469 it was declared that anyone who does not declare that mary is indeed the mother of god should be condemned nowhere in the scriptures will you read about uh a mother a godmother or mother god that's right, nowhere right, in the right. bible at all keep going another title that has been given to mary is the queen of heaven queen of heaven we're about to read about that too in jeremiah yep. keep going the tradition of referring to mary as the queen of heaven is a long one however since antiquity this is a title that has been used to refer to several goddesses mm. isis anat inanna asarte hera asherah and juno all pagan stuff all of them they were all worshipped under this title the worship of the queen of heaven was also recorded in the book of jeremiah the prophet writes, the children gather wood, and the fathers kindle the fire, and the women ned their dough, to make cakes to the queen of heaven, and to pour out drink offerings unto other gods. Let's just go ahead and get Jeremiah. Let's jump to Jeremiah 44. Let's go ahead and read that, 44 and 15. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 44, verse 15. Mm-hmm. Then all the men which knew that their wives had burnt incense unto other gods. So these men out of order. They got their wives out here uh, in idolatry. Yep. They, and they crazy. know it. And they know it. Keep going. And all the women that stood by, a great multitude, even all the people that dwelt in the land of Egypt, in Pathros, answered Jeremiah saying. So they're they going to they talk some mess to Jeremiah. Let's see what they said. Go ahead. As for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the Lord, we will not hearken unto thee. So they say, man, we ain't going to listen to nothing you got to say. We don't give a dag on what God say. We're going to keep mm. on worshiping this idol over here. Just like uh, today, we get out here and we teach the people, trying to teach them, and they're going to go out here and, and break their neck. They stand in line right now to vote for Hillary and uh, right. what's his name? Tim Kaine. And uh, Donald. Donald uh, oh, Trump. Donald, yeah, yeah. yeah, them too. So that instead of coming back to keeping the laws, like you can go out there, I don't care who you vote for. You vote for Hillary, you vote for Trump. Then the next day, you got a brother shooting another brother in the neighborhood or right. robbing another brother. What good is your vote doing? Right. Go ahead. Verse 17. But we will certainly do whatsoever thing goeth forth out of our own mouth. So they're going to do, they're going to do what they want to do. They're not going right. to do. Anything according to this Bible, they're not listening to Jeremiah about uh, this idolatry they're involved in. Go ahead. To burn incense unto the queen of heaven. Didn't we just read about that wow. in the book? The queen of heaven. That That's what the Catholics call Mary, the queen of heaven, based yep. in paganism. This is root. Jeremiah's talking about this. Go ahead. And to pour out drink offerings unto her as we have done. We and our fathers, our kings and our princes in the cities of Judah. And in the streets of Jerusalem, for them had we plenty victuals and were well and saw no evil. So they're saying that because they offer these uh, offerings to, these, uh, to this false god, that they were receiving blessings from this false god. Keep going. But since we left to burn incense to the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her, we have wanted all things and have been consumed by the sword and by the famine. So now they're they getting judgment. Let's jump over to uh, verse 27. Verse 27, yeah. Verse 27, Jeremiah uh, 44, 27. Behold, I will watch over them for evil and not for good. Mm. And all the men of Judah that are in the land of Egypt shall be consumed by the sword. So God is going to judge these men because these men is out of order for letting their women go off like that. Right. right. Keep going. And by the famine until there be an end, end of them. So <laughs> the Most High going to put all them jokers to death. For being caught up in this idolatry. So let's get this video real quick. The statue of Mary cries. Let me show you this foolishness. Hey 
Hey, Beyond Science, Mike Chin here. A statue of the Virgin Mary that locals say is weeping oily tears has attracted thousands of believers to a, not a church, but a small apartment in Israel. Osama and Amira Curry say 2,000 people have turned up at their apartment in Tarsiha near the Lebanon border since they first witnessed the miracle inside their own living room. I'm مسكت الزيت قلت له قوم شوف الزيت في زيت على وجه قوم تعال شوف صار يضحك وما صدقنيش قلت لا ابن جيراننا اللي قاعد عنا قلت له قوم وتعال شوف الزيت عم بنزل بس كان انا غلطاني ولا لا قام وشاف فلما قال له في زيت قام جوزي انا خفت كتير the couple say they bought the statue last year, but have only recently noticed it crying. They claim that wiping the statue does nothing to remove the oily sheen, and that oily tears appear to roll down the saint's cheeks. اجت واحدة مني وفي اللي هي أختي مسحت وجهها وقعدنا نستنى. And you can see people still involved in that idolatry today and that foolishness today. And that, that's going to get people killed. Because that ain't nothing but some garbage. Let's jump to Acts 19. The book of Acts, chapter 19, verse 26. To show you that this is still going on in the New Testament. So we read about it in the Old Testament under Jeremiah. Now let's go to the New Testament. Moreover, ye see and hear that not alone at Ephesus, but almost throughout all Asia, this Paul hath persuaded and turned away much people saying that they be no gods which are made with hands. So Paul is saying that no God can be made with hands. He's teaching these people to come out of idolatry. Let's keep going. Verse 27. So that not only this our craft is in danger to be set at naught, but also that the temple of the great goddess Diana. Oh, didn't we hmm. read about Diana earlier? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Now, heaven. now how in the world is it that hmm. these Catholics say that they follow the Bible, but yet we read here in the book of Acts, and they still following after Mary, which is another name for the goddess Diana. So let, let's go ahead. Keep going. That the temple of the great goddess Diana should be despised and her magnificence should be destroyed, whom all Asia and the world worshipeth. Mm. Verse 28. And when they had heard these sayings, they were full of wrath and cried out, saying, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. <laughs> <laughs> so he brought this word out. Them jokers got mad. You know what I'm saying? They trying to still keep standing in this idolatry. Just like when you tell the Negroes today about the, you know, the Christian stuff that they caught up in or the politics or whatever mm -hmm. it is. Mm -hmm. Jokers get upset. You ain't going to vote. Right. Yeah. You ain't going to vote. On well, Christmas. Yeah. Well, you ain't going to celebrate Christmas. What's wrong with y'all? Jesus' birthday. Yeah. Go ahead. Verse 30. And when Paul would have entered into the temple unto the people, the disciples suffered him not. Keep going. Verse 31. And certain of the chief of Asia, which were his friends, sent unto him, desiring him that he would not adventure himself into the theater. Oh, we're supposed to jump down to 34. Jump down to 34 so we can get right to the point. But when they knew that he was a Jew, all with one voice about the space of two hours cried out, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. Mm. These people don't want to give it up, man. <laughs> they want to stay in this idolatry. Go ahead. Keep going. Verse 35. <coughs> and when the town clerk had appeased the people, he said, Ye men of Ephesus, what man is there that knoweth not how that the city of the Ephesians is a worshiper of the great goddess Diana and of the image which fell down from Jupiter? You see all this idolatry? Mm. This is in the New Testament. So yep. I don't understand how it is that these people can be following, the, so they say, following the Bible and no. then just ignore these scriptures and still worship this, you know, Mary. And nowhere in the scriptures does it tell us to do that. So let's jump to uh, Luke. The book of Luke, chapter 11, verse 27. And it came to pass, as he spake these things, a certain woman of the company lifted up her voice and said unto him, Said unto Christ, "Blessed is blessed is the womb that bear thee." So now he's saying, she's saying basically, "Bless Mary, right, <laughs> right, right, right." And the paps which thou hast sucked, and, her, and so Mary, her breast that, that fed him mm -hmm. and nourished him. But, but he said, "Yea, rather blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it." Mm. 
<laughs> so what Christ said. So you mean them Catholics in there praying to Mary, if they're not keeping the commandments, what's going on? <laughs> Christ nah, is letting you know right, right there. Right. It's straight out. Right. You're gonna be sitting right on top of that new cloud. That's uh -huh. exactly what he that's exactly the shorthand of what he's saying. All right, so let's uh that is that it on that? Yeah. All right, let's go to uh video video. Mexican uh Mexican Mexican. For centuries, Mexicans have been putting their trust in the leaders of the Catholic Church, but it was one of its most popular and powerful priests, Father Marcial Maciel, who church authorities say preyed on young seminarians and children. As a young scholar in the Vatican, José Barba became one of Maciel's youngest victims. At the time, he says he didn't question Maciel because he was a fervent believer in the Word of God and that of his superiors. I thought that part of the problem was in me because I resisted submitting myself to God's will. Church authorities in Mexico now admit that over a 40-year period, Maciel abused nearly 200 victims, including two of his own children. Barba and seven other alleged victims brought their cases to the Vatican. A lawyer told us the case couldn't advance further because another cardinal, Angelo Sodano, the Vatican Secretary of State today, pressured Cardinal Joseph Ratzinger, who was in charge of sex abuse cases, so that this went no further. In 1999, Father Alberto Atie sent a letter to Ratzinger by way of a Mexican bishop detailing the abuses. Se me cayó Ratzinger. Cardinal Ratzinger said to him, I'm sorry, but this case cannot be investigated because Father Maciel is a great friend of the Holy Father, Pope John Paul II, and has done much good for the Church. I'm sorry, but it isn't prudent. That was a verbal response from the Cardinal Ratzinger, and he never responded to my letter. So as you see, we... Uh just showing the, the amount of evil in the Catholic Church with these mm -hmm. pedophile priests yep. praying on the little kids. Let's, let's get uh, Galatians 5 and 19. The book of Galatians chapter 5 and verse 19. Because he's supposed to be men of the Lord, right? Yep. He's supposed to be. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, mm -hmm. fornication, uncleanliness, Lasciviousness. That's what we're talking about right now. Lasciviousness. Them mm -hmm. grown men messing with little boys. What kind of madness is that? That's madness. Let's get uh First Corinthians uh six. Six. And nine. The book of First Corinthians, chapter six and verse nine. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not enter into the kingdom of God? Okay, so now we're talking about the unrighteous and, and inheriting the kingdom of heaven is not gonna happen. Keep going. Oh, let me start that again. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, mm -hmm. nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, mm -hmm. nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners, nor shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So that long list right there and the sexual sins is up in there. So those priests, you ain't going to be seeing Father uh, Paul or whatever his name is in the kingdom. He's going to be sitting right on that new cloud. Believe that. Yep. So let's go ahead and get uh, Romans 1. The book of Romans chapter 1 verse 25. Who changed the truth of God into a lie? Because we see that a lot of uh, truths of God have been changed to a lie as we're going over in this lesson right here. Mm-hmm. And worshiped and served the creature more than the creator. Because that's what they do in, the, in Catholicism. Who was blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God gave them unto vile affection. What God do? Gave them unto vile affection. Like playing with little boys and all that <laughs> madness. Right. For even unto their woman did change the, nat did change the natural use. Into that which is against nature. So they had problems with them nuns too, uh, up in them churches messing with each other. Go ahead. And likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another. Mm. So they out there burning in their lust, messing with them little boys. Men with men. Men with men. Keep going. Working, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves. That recompense of their error which was met. Mm, meaning they're going to be put to death. They're going to be sitting right on that new cloud like I said. Mm. Yep. All right, let's continue dealing with these priests. Let's get uh, 1 Timothy 4, start at verse 1 through 3. The book of 1 Timothy, chapter 4 and verse 1. 
Now the Spirit speaketh expressly uh-huh. that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. Because they went into idolatry. Read on. Giving heed to seducing spirits mm-hmm. and doctrines of devils. Mm-hmm. That's the idolatry. Mm-hmm. Verse 2. Speaking lies and hypocrisy. Lies and hypocrisy. Having, All nations can't be saved. Read on. Having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Because even though you bring out the truth to them, uh, straight out the book, they say, well, no, son, that's your in private interpretation. Right, right. How, can you, how can you interpret something when you're reading it straight out the book? Read on. Verse 3. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats. See, this is the priests. This is these uh, priests. Uh-huh. They forbid to marry. And why, yeah. why they don't marry, they up here mess with little boys. Uh-huh. You got the nuns not marrying. They mess with each other. Crazy. And then uh, forbidding meats. That's that. What's that? Lent. Uh, Lent. Lent. Yeah. Lent. God. And, all, and this is not in the Bible. Nope. Read no on. in the Bible. Which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving. Of them which believe and know the truth. See, now that part right there, that's what the Christians say. See, that's why I thanks God on Thanksgiving for everything. This pork chop is yummy. The last part says that know the truth, meaning know the law. Right. right. The dietary laws is a part of that. Uh, let's continue. Matter of fact, let's get uh, Colossians 2 and 8 real quick. And then I'm going to continue. The book of Colossians chapter 2 and verse 8. Beware, lest any man spoil you through vain, through philosophy and vain deceit. You see that? It says, beware, lest any man spoil you, rob you through philosophy and vain, lying deceit. Mm -hmm. Read read on. After the tradition of men. After the traditions of men, the worship of stone, the worship of wood, the worship of the queen of heaven. Read on. After the rudiments of the world. The ways of the world. And because if you don't celebrate <coughs> Christmas, everybody looking at you like, what the hell is wrong with you? And You're all right, right. You're strange. Yeah. You got atheists to celebrate Christmas. <laughs> right. <laughs> Read on. And not after Christ. Because uh, uh, a tr- Christian is supposed to be a follower of Christ. Christ never did no Christmas. Sunday never worship. Easter, Sunday worship. None of that. He said, keep the, keep the law. Keep the commandments. Right. All right. Then let's get uh, Hebrews 13 and 4. The book of Hebrews, chapter 13 and verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all. Hmm. So hold on. First, these priests saying they forbid to marry. Right. Because they say, no, we, we're not going to marry. We're going to uh, worship our idols. Mm-hmm. And screw little boys. And mess with little boys. And molest little boys. Mm-hmm. But the scriptures say marriage is honorable. So it's not a sin to get married. Read on. And the bed undefiled. And you can do with your wife whatever you want, as long as it's lawful. Marriage is honorable. Uh, now let's get the video, Mike. Confession. Confession. How to go to confession. Reconciliation or penance is one of Catholicism's seven sacraments, and followers are expected to go to confession at least once a year. Rest assured that the priest, bound by the seal of confession, will not divulge your sins. You will need a conscience, a priest, a confessional or other private place, the desire to seek forgiveness, and the will to be better. Step 1. Examine your actions since your last confession. Reflect on those that have hurt other people or distanced you from God. Step 2. Call your local church or consult a parish bulletin to find out when confessions are scheduled. If necessary, you can also arrange a different time with a priest. Step 3. Enter the confessional or the designated meeting place. You do not have to be in a classic confessional to receive the Sacrament of Reconciliation. Step 4. Greet the priest. Step 5. Say, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. It's been X days, months, or years since my last confession. Step six, tell the priest about the hurtful actions you thought about earlier. Rather than giving him a laundry list of sins, take the opportunity to have an open dialogue with your confessor. Step seven, receive your penance from the priest, which is usually some form of prayer or reconciliation with another person. Step eight, say the act of contrition. Step 9. Receive the priest's absolution, which frees you of your sins.
step 10. Do your penance and I, resolve. At first, when they first came can. on, I thought it was a joke. Same? Yeah, I thought it was too. I thought it was fake, like but apparently that's their process. <laughs> <laughs> hey, get uh, 1 Timothy 2 and 5. The book of 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5. For there is one God and uh-huh. one mediator between God and men. So there's one mediator between the Most High God and men mm-hmm. on earth. The man, Christ Jesus. The mo- Christ, that's it. Right. So they saying that you got to go to these priests and you got to do all of this stuff. Now, during the uh, uh, Roman times, you had to pay these priests uh-huh. a lot of money. That's how the Roman Catholic Church has became so established. Still do. Matter of fact, they had to buy their way into heaven. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm. I remember that. Uh, let's continue. Uh, the book, the John. Of, the book of John, chapter 14, verse 6. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. See that? So Christ is telling you, look, you're not going to get to the Father except by me. So and Christ asked us to keep the laws. Yeah, so you ain't going to go see the uh, priest in the little box. <laughs> exactly. In the little box. Step one, step two. Right. Ten. <laughs> hey, when you get to the end, on the end of the video, we didn't play it, but it says that they don't tell none. Of, they don't even if you break the law, the priest is bound. He can't tell. He can't tell anybody what you confess. Mm-hmm. The yeah. book, the book of Hebrews, chapter nine and verse fifteen. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament Mm -hmm. they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance you see that paul it said christ died for those that was under the first testament which was only the israelites right that's right there's a straight cutter right right Right. exactly he said that he is the mediator so that means you gotta go through him in order to get to the father and that's also telling you the people that wasn't under the first covenant is not under the second covenant he didn't die for them yeah right Mm. Next the, verse. The, the, verse 16. Nah, yo, you gonna get that? Nah, 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 bro. Get uh, Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12, 12. 24. All right. Come on, man. The book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 24. And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, mm-hmm. and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. Verse 25. See that ye refuse not him that speaketh, for if they escaped not who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. So the point is 24. It's pretty much saying, it's once again, that. Christ is the mediator. Exactly. Now let's jump to verse uh, Hebrews 8, 6 through 8. The book of Hebrews chapter 8, verse 6. But now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry, by how much also is the mediator of of a better covenant Mm. which was established upon better promises okay so it's still saying the same thing christ is the mediator not some little priest or some pope sitting up in this uh temple and you got to kiss his ring and all this stuff i don't even know where the hell they get this stuff from because it's not in the bible so you're gonna go and sit in a little box with a pedophile and confess your sins Mm -hmm. there you go the book of leviticus chapter 5 verse 1 Mm -hmm. and if a soul sin and hear the voice of swearing and as a witness, whether he hath seen or known of it, if he do not utter it, then he shall bear his iniquity. So that means tell. If yeah. you see a soul about to sin, say something. Yeah, or if you right. go to a confessional and you can tell them that you murdered somebody yeah. or did something yeah. else, <laughs> and they saying that they don't tell nobody. Yeah, exactly. This is telling you that they're going against the Bible. Exactly. They're supposed to... Uh, Confess that they're supposed to let the authorities know. They go up in there, Father, I done cheated on my husband. I had killed five people. Hmm. I feel better now. I got it off my chest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that stuff is stupid, man. Yeah. Get uh, the two Babylons, page uh, 93 and 94. The two Babylons by Reverend Alexander Hyssop, page 93. Upright men strove to the stem the tide, but in spite of all their efforts, the apostasy went on till the church, with the exception of a small remnant, was submerged under pagan superstition. 
that Christmas was originally a pagan festival. So it's, these these priests, they already knew. Mm. They already knew that all of that stuff or origin was paganism. They were trying to bring all of the pagans into the church. Right. That's why they brought those customs into the church and just renamed them. Go ahead. And it's beyond all doubt. The time of the year and the ceremonies which it is still celebrated prove its origin. In Egypt, the son of Isis, the Egyptian title for the queen of heaven, was born at this very time, about the time of the winter solstice. The very name by which Christmas is popularly known among ourselves, mm -hmm. Yule Day, mm -hmm. proves at once its pagan and Babylonian origin. Mm. Yule is the Chaldee name for an infant or a little child. Mm. And as the 25th, the 25th December was called by our pagan Anglo-Saxon ancestors Yule Day mm. or the Child's Day. And in the night that preceded it, Mother's Night, mm. long, Back before, to the mother. Yep. long before they came in contact with Christianity, that sufficiently proves its real character. Far and wide in the realms of paganism there was the go. birthday observed. Man, there so that's go. telling you what the Back. the cross is is pagan. Mm -hmm. That's pagan. The uh, Sunday, Sunday worship right. is pagan, the and their Mary is pagan. pagan. Yep. and the holidays is pagan. Yep. So, but they call themselves Christians though. Yeah, but know. they following paganism. Christians of paganism. All right. Yeah. Let's get Jeremiah <laughs> ten and one. Let's get straight that's to the crazy, point, man. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 10 and verse 1. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Uh-huh, to the Israelites, only for you. Read on. Mm -hmm. Verse 2. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen. So, Most High is saying, don't learn the ways of these heathens. Read on. And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. Oh, don't, don't be dismayed at the sun. Don't worship the sun, the moon, the stars, the planets. Read on. For the heathen are dismayed at them. That's the heathens. That's right. what they do. Read on. For the customs of the people are vain. Here we go. Now here's a custom. Read on. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen, mm -hmm. with the axe. Verse 4. They deck it with silver and with gold. Mm. Silver and gold. There's your Christmas tree. Read on. They fasten it with nails and with a hammer. Christmas that it, stand. That it, not, that it move not. Because at this time, they were afraid that uh, the tree would come alive and right. attack them. Mm -hmm. Verse 5. They are upright as the palm tree. Because at that time, that's when they used, to, uh, they used to keep palm trees. Read on. But they speak not. They must needs be born because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil. Mm -hmm. Neither also is it in them to do good. So that's that's Christmas in the Bible, and the Bible saying don't celebrate it is a vain custom. Plain as day. Yeah, we that's gotta clear. get ready. There's no interpretation. So with that, uh, folks, we say shalom. Shalom. Most, Most high, high Christ, Christ bless. Shalom. Most high Christ bless. And Christians around the world are celebrating Easter with many choosing sunrise services, like this one at UB North Newman Center in Amherst. Take a look. Hallelujah. Parishioners gathered in the chilly morning air shortly after 6 this morning. This has become a long-standing tradition for congregates. Over the years, they've gathered in sunshine, rain, and even snow to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. Parishioners shared friendship and fellowship, joining together... Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 6 For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God right. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee To be a special people unto himself we, we, we. Above all people That are upon the face of the earth It's the black cream that sets us above Jealous cause we the only people he love Got you wishing you was called to set the black guy Repent and keep the laws, nah it ain't hard It's just a black cream that sets us above Be jealous cause we the only people he love Got you wishing you was called to set the black guy Repent and keep the laws, nah it ain't hard The black of the berry, the sweet of the juice Milking the profit from the trees but destroy my roots But they don't fall too far from where they grew We're never in the cycle You either shoot or moonwalk Choose your Michael, either way, slaves entertain to maintain their day to day. But God is great in his mercy, it bounce forever. Just stare in the mirror. Hopefully you'll see the treasure every deep inside of you. We told you that you were pure gold. So much so the kingdom we get and paid for gold roads. Drove them the anger, we had to pay a biblical toll. Black and beautiful, the highest only chose us. Shout out to Ephraim, my 
brother from another mother Two sticks grafted together, try to tear us asunder Rulership over the earth, make the nations covered Royalty in its purest form, they gotta wonder How they compare to a drop, he chose to love us It's the black cream that sets us above Jealous cause we the only people he love Got you wishing you was called to set the black guy Repent and keep the laws and hide ain't hard Shalom, this is, I'm Elton Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, Please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates from all our YouTube channels. Shalom.